What's going on ladies and gents, Billy Donnelly here and this is Infamous and today via the wonders of digital video I'll be heading back to college, not just to party but to learn valuable life lessons as I review Neighbors 2 Sorority Rising. Serving as the follow up to the surprise comedy hit of 2014 that saw Seth Rogen and Zac Efron battling it out over the behavior of a rowdy fraternity in a quiet neighborhood, Neighbors 2 operates under a similar premise. This time, an unwanted sorority moves in next door to Rogan and his wife, played once again by Rose Byrne, threatening the couple's escape from their current living situation and into the safer confines of suburbia. Now I know what you're thinking. A cash grab comedy sequel that's just going to replicate the same formula that made the first movie a ton of money? We've been here before. Except we haven't. Neighbors 2 is the rare occurrence of a sequel trying new things with its setup, while injecting its story with relevant commentary about the current state of our society on everything from sexism to gender equality to racism with plenty more in between. Neighbors 2 has something of value to say and to add to the conversations we're having now in our everyday lives about double standards and acceptable behavior for men and women and the positive and negative perceptions of what feminism is all about. It's a clever and thoughtful approach to what might otherwise be a daunting task of living up to expectations created by its predecessor. And while I believe the first Neighbors might be the funnier movie of the pair, Neighbors 2 is without question the smarter film. Nicholas Stoller's movie is a wolf in sheep's clothing. It's a course in modern day gender studies disguised as a raunchy sorority flick. And because of that, you almost have to appreciate what Neighbors 2 is able to accomplish even more. It seeks to elevate the conversation on the down low rather than wearing its heart on its sleeve. And in letting the audience pick up what it's putting down on their own terms over preaching at them, you're more likely to pick up all the subtext Neighbors 2 is offering up in between bouts of hilarity involving car airbags and bloody tampons. Separate, definitely not together. Chloe Grace Moretz is the vehicle for most of those big ideas as Shelby, a college freshman who seeks to buck the system as it's been constructed. She's not in line with the norms that have been laid out for her on how she should behave or dress as a young woman, and sets out to start her very own sorority in order to be who she wants to be, world be damned. She wants to be able to throw bashes with her friends, something sororities are prohibited from doing even though frat parties are perfectly okay, while wearing sweatpants and smoking weed without someone passing judgment on her life choices. And at the same time, she faces the constantly proposed questions of if she'd be allowed to do that if she were a man which can be both liberating and also problematic. She's pushing boundaries that need pushing while being goaded into breaking down other walls that maybe women previously had better sense than men to leave standing. Just because you want to be able to do everything a man can doesn't mean you always should. Not when men constantly do some really stupid shit. It's a very rich role for Moretz to take on, and she's able to deliver on the many layers of the character's complexity, be it her innocence, her defiance, or her sense of self. When you hear people say they want strong female characters, Maritza's Shelby is exactly what they should be asking for more of. Rogan and Efron add an entirely different dynamic to their end of the film that helps flesh out Neighbors 2 as a must watch. With a second baby on the way, Rogan's Mac must really explore his role as a parent and a grown up. Being an adult means trying to squash beefs with your neighbors, not provoke them further as he did in the first film. And while there certainly are hijinks that Rogan is a part of in order to defend his turf and his family's way of life, there is a maturity to the character this time around that Seth eases into. This is no longer a man-child that you can count on to do the aforementioned dumb shit. This is a man who is slowly becoming a voice of reason, and it is a welcome change for Rogan as a performer and adds balance to the film. Efron faces similar challenges in the film, as his Teddy Sanders is a lost boy in a 26-year-old's body. He's facing a quarter-life crisis of what he is making of his life, as everyone close to him seems to have no problem figuring it out. Parting is no longer the answer to everything, and he needs to come to terms with the idea that it's time to grow up too, in his own way. Efron has fantastic comic sensibilities that a film like Neighbors 2 really takes advantage of, and mixed with the sadness that makes his character less of a caricature and more of a real person, his performances in these movies really showcase what he is capable of. I have nothing but high praise for Neighbors 2, the rare comedy sequel that works as its own entity. 
There may be a callback here or there to the original that are sure to generate the same laughs, but the Neighbors series has matured in its own right, understanding that eventually you can't just keep doing the same thing over and over again. If you want to evolve, you need to make some changes. In a Neighbors 2's case, those changes are all good. Be sure to like this video down below, feel free to join in the discussion by leaving your own comments, and subscribe to the YouTube channel as a whole so you can be notified of all new video reviews, interviews, and podcasts that come your way. That way, you never miss a bit of content from us. Until next time, I'm Billy Donnelly for This Is Infamous.